everyone, it's Felicia Walker Benson of This That Beauty blog, and today I invite you down an incredible journey with me to the This That Beauty show. So if you follow my blog, you already know on a daily basis we talk beauty, fashion, skincare, tips, we do lots of videos and tutorials. So on the This That Beauty show, you can expect more of the same, but lively, way more anim animated, and with lots of great guests. So to kick off our very first episode of the This That Beauty show, I've got two spectacular and amazing guests for you. First off is a dear friend of mine, and we're so honored and grateful to have him on our very first show, is celebrity makeup artist, Emmy award-winning makeup artist, Mr. Kevin James Bennett, and my personal beauty guru. So I'm so excited to have him here. And here's what we're gonna chat with Kevin. We're gonna talk 2012 beauty trends, because we all wanna know what's hot, what's now, what's new for 2012. But we're also gonna change it a little bit and talk about how to make those 2012 trends wearable for every day. So something is great on the runway, but how do we make that beautiful for real life? So Kevin is gonna walk us through all of that. My second guest that I'm also super excited to have, sports analyst Shayna Stevenson of All Sports Everything. Now, girls, Shayna's gonna help us break down the Super Bowl and help us to figure out what we need to know to watch the game with our guy without getting in the way, without asking silly questions or things like that. So I'm excited to have Shayna here to talk about sports. We're gonna talk about the Super Bowl in general, but she's gonna give us some other you know, tips to kind of navigate the sports scene with our man because we want to be cool and kind of know what's going on and participate. I know that I do. So I, just for personal reasons, I'm really looking forward to Shana's talk with us. Today, I am bursting at the seams to introduce you to today's special guest. For the very first episode of the This That Beauty show, we're so excited to have Emmy Award winning makeup artist and beauty guru to the stars, Kevin James Bennett. Welcome, Kevin. You're bursting at the what? At the scenes. <laughs> I love it. Literally bursting with excitement to I'm have you. I'm so excited to be here for your inaugural show. Of I'm, course. I'm honored. I'm ridiculously honored. So we have so much there to get into. There is so much going on. So much on in the world right of beauty. Now. It's My ever changing God. and evolving. It's interesting. In this recession, we're having that lipstick effect. Uh huh. People can't buy them in all the pumps. Mm -hmm. Well, some can. Some still uh, can. Some still can. Uh, but everybody could buy lipstick. Everybody mm -hmm. could buy makeup. Uh, we're seeing makeup trend on the consumer side. Mm -hmm. is just going crazy. They want to know what's new, what's hot, because it's giving them a little boost. It's uh -huh. making them happy. You're right. You're right. Women still want that thing that's going to make them feel good that they can afford. So you're right. They can't afford the expensive handbag or the expensive shoes. But you know what? I've got an extra 30 bucks. I'll buy me a great lipstick. Exactly, and and this is possibly one of the most exciting seasons we're coming into mm -hmm. now for color. Mm -hmm. I mean, color cosmetics mm -hmm. have pretty much landed exactly where I love them, uh -huh. which is color. No offense, I mean, I love the natural look, but okay. actually I don't like the natural look. No? I like the neutral look. I like a good neutral, I like a neutral. tonal okay, there look you go. every now and then. Neutral tonal, that's okay. great. Okay. This whole natural thing that everybody's like, I want to look natural. It's like, you know how much makeup takes to look natural? I tell people that it takes more makeup to look natural like you're not than wearing to, anything. to go glam. I love a beautiful neutral makeup, mm -hmm. but the thing is now with the trends coming in, mm -hmm. you're just getting that beautiful, juicy pop of color like okay. we did with you today. I, uh -huh. I kind of I kind of directed Felicia's hand a little ah. bit today. I was like, girl, no red lip. Okay. It's like, let's let's move forward now. Okay, so you're, you're already directing us towards trend. So let's get into trend. <laughs> you guys know I love, adore, I can't live without my statement red lip, usually matte to semi matte. And I wanted to do my red lip today. And Kevin said, oh, no, girl, we're getting into trends. We're going to talk trend. Let's get into some tang tangerine. So before I steal your thunder, let's talk trends. Um, and then we'll make it more relatable and how we can adopt it into, you know, kind of everyday real way. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk trends first. So you tell me, what do you see as one of the top trends for 2012? We'll get into a couple of others. But Pantone, of course, came okay. out with a list of the um premier spring summer colors uh -huh. and they named um, as of I think two weeks ago okay tangerine tango oh. as the color of the year okay now tangerine tango is a rather strong statement mm -hmm. color it's it's a real reddish based orange okay. it's really strong it's gorgeous and the thing that I love about it it's it's 
It's a color that looks good on every skin tone. Now stop there. How do you make this wearable? Every skin tone, so from fair to my complexion, deep, how are we making this Look wearable? And is it eyes, is it nails, is it lips? Look what we did to your lips today. Okay. Because the thing is, on your skin tone, mm -hmm. we wanted to, we wanted to we wanted to show it a little bit more user friendly. Okay. So instead of going full satin finish or okay. matte finish in a tangerine lipstick, uh -huh. we cut it back with a little bit of gloss. Okay. So you've got this illusion of this beautiful, juicy tangerine juicy, lip. Juicy, I like but that. It's, but it's really, it's very accessible. Uh -huh. People that are afraid of wearing red, that are afraid of wearing tangerine, afraid mm -hmm. of wearing strong colors on the lips, I always tell them, just take a little bit of lipstick, uh -huh. rub it into your moisturized lip as uh -huh. a stain, Okay. then put some clear gloss over yeah. it. You've got the illusion or the feeling of the uh -huh. color without committing to the full color. So it makes you more modern, you're more trend inspired, you're not necessarily on the cutting edge, Edge, but it's kind of more trend inspired, more modern. And the gloss, I think, kind of makes anything wearable. It softens it up. I, I understand that we have trends that we go from a satin finish to a cream mm -hmm. finish to a matte finish, but we're, we're talking about spring, summer. Okay. Spring, summer, I'm sorry. There is nothing happy about a matte lip in uh, hot weather. I love my red no, matte lip. But you know no, why? But, but I'll tell you why summer. I like it. I'll tell you why I like it. If we haven't noticed already under the cameras, I have extremely oily skin. So for me, I like that contrast okay. of the matte and the dewy skin. Now, if I had like, so I feel like sometimes like a glossy lip and like a dewy, let's just call it dewy skin. Not okay. greasy, dewy. No, no, we don't use so those I words. So I kind of feel you like glow. Dewy, right, I glow, I glow, glow, exactly. So sometimes the glow on the face and the glow on the lips, it's like. I'm just saying. It can be a bit much. Spring, summer, because it is a time when we're wearing less clothing, uh -huh. lighter clothing. Mm -hmm. It's warmer, it's brighter out. We're spending a lot of time out of doors. Okay. I like a softer looking lip. Okay. I think it's I think first of all it's a lot more accessible looking. I agree. I think that it works for a lot more people, a I agree. much larger cross section of people. Okay. Also it, it takes that that onus off of wearing a full strength lip color. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of women are afraid. I mean, we created this whole nude lip uh -huh. phenomenon, mm -hmm. and now women, a lot of women, are afraid of wearing color. I can't mm -hmm. wear red, I can't wear orange, I can't right. wear color, I don't wear pink. Yeah, like, I hear that so why? much. Why? I hear that so why? much. Why? It's like, so the thing is, if, if, it, if it means cutting it back with a little mm -hmm. bit of shine to get them into that mm -hmm. lip color, I'm all for it. Okay, now where else, you know, can we incorporate this tangerine? And I guess it goes from Kind of peach, tangerine, orange, everything along that, you know. Well, they were more band. color. I mean, it, the, the, Where, the can trend. Can we wear it on our cheeks, eyes? Well, we put nails. a little bit of it. We put a little bit of the tangerine on your cheeks also, because okay. I, I kind of like the cheek lip. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, we have to leave the eyes very neutral. Okay. The thing is, it's like you don't want to have the big earrings and the big necklace. Right. Exactly. So we could do lip and cheek, but we can't do lip, cheek, and eye. Okay. It's a little bit too much. So it's always about balance. It's always about balance. Mm -hmm. And the other nice thing that you could do also, uh, because Tangerine Tango, of course, was the big number one color, uh -huh. but there were some gorgeous magentas. There were some beautiful lilacs, mm -hmm. some strong yellows. Okay. I mean, any of these colors can be incorporated into your makeup as a single note. Okay. This is the thing. People get very phobic about color. Okay. But let's say that you're doing the quintessential smoky eye. Mm hmm Instead of using that black pencil, that gray pencil, uh -huh. that brown pencil, mm -hmm. use a dark purple pencil. Ah, uh, like a use jewel tone. Use a jewel tone mm -hmm. green. Okay. Use a color. What I love to do is on an eye makeup, mm -hmm. to inject one bit of color, take a strong color eyeshadow, okay. whether it be a pink, whether it be an orange, whether it be a yellow, okay. wash it on the lid before you start doing any other makeup. Mm -hmm. Put it on the lid, blend it up into the crease, then do your liner, do your mascara, do your contour. By the time you're done, you've dampened down the color enough so it's okay. just an accent. Okay. So the thing is, you had that little pop, and when your eye is open, people don't automatically notice right, it, uh -huh. but when you lower your lid slightly, it's like that little, oh, little bit of a surprise. And it just gives this beautiful effect. It's not like color, color, no, color. and it's a great surprise, and it's very fresh, it's very on point, it's gotcha. very trend-worthy. Okay. And it allows you to play with your makeup, because the thing that people don't realize, mm -hmm. anything that washes off that easily, mm -hmm can't be that serious. Right, I agree. So the thing is you have to play with your makeup. I agree. I always tell women, like, experiment. Try different colors. Like, instead of your, you know, your black liner every day, try something a little bit different. The worst thing that can happen is you don't like it and you wash it off. Like, it's just that, that exactly. simple. Exactly. It's that simple. Okay. So we're ready for your next big trend. What else you got for us? 
we're playing around with layering or doing an ombre type of look mm -hmm. on eyes, kind of tonal. Hmm. Um, I'm going to edit myself because, okay. because I'm going to try and be kind about this. All right, but we don't I have am, a, a sensor in the booth, so be careful. I am <laughs> so tired of the smoky eye, but I really am. I'm tired of it. I'm ti I mean, no you know smoky what? eye? Not no smoky eye, but the thing is, it's like, okay, you know what? We need to do something a little fresh to okay. it. We need to change it up a okay. little bit. So what do you what, got? Tell us, okay. What I'm loving is take that whole ombre tonality, okay. take a beautiful dark brown smoky eye, okay, and layer an iridescent khaki over the top of it to give it a dimension, to give it a tonality, okay. to give it something, some depth. Okay. To make is it, it more, more of interesting. a wash? Definitely. After okay. you're done, you take a beautiful shimmering or a metallic color okay. and you just wash it over it. Okay. Just and it's going to gonna it, naturally give that ombre effect, it going is. from lighter to darker. And it's it's going to catch light oh, okay. and move it around. And you're still going to have your quote unquote smoky eye that everybody loves. Okay. Because it is. It's a, it's a great glamour look. Right. It's a great glamour mm -hmm. look. And it's very sophisticated mm -hmm. or it could be very playful. Yeah. It could be very sexy. It could be a, a number of things. It's a go-to for a lot of women. It's a great look. But the thing is we have to change it up a bit. Okay. And bringing in, and this is where the whole thing with metallics excites me so much. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that metallics are so big again mm -hmm. coming in. And it's not just your typical gold, silvers, bronzes. We're seeing metallic colors. You're seeing blue. Mm -hmm. purples, greens, mm -hmm. pinks. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these colors are coming in strong. Can you imagine doing that smoky eye in a beautiful, like, royal blue oh, metal finish? Stunning. So some other options might be like navy or aubergine, something in the, that family, something other than black. Definitely, and the thing that I like about the fact that it's metallic, especially mm -hmm compelling is changing it up for nighttime. Mm -hmm. When you're in a low light situation, mm -hmm. if you're wearing a dark matte eyeshadow, mm -hmm. it's like your eyes are swimming in some abyss somewhere. There's mm -hmm. no life, there's no light. Mm -hmm. When you use a metallic color, every now and again, as the light passes or as you right. get caught, it's gonna give that other point of interest. Uh -huh. It's gonna give that little bit of a wow, that little yeah. bit of, <gasps> ooh. And I find that these metallics are so easy to use. Like you can just kind of smudge and the lighting does all the work. Exactly. So you don't need like a lid, a crease, a contour, an inner and outer. You don't need to go through exactly. all that. You can just do a little smudge on the lower lash line and then like the lighting kind of does all the work when you look down, look to the side, look up. So it's a ton of fun. I think it's a great option. I have one more thing that I want to address while we're here. Please. Because there's been this whole big thing about BB creams. Well, we should first say what BB creams are. You explain, darling. You're the expert. <laughs> so BB creams <laughs> are blemish balms, and they have been hugely, wildly popular in, in Asia. And it's kind of like a combination of a blemish treatment cream, a concealer, a foundation in one. And women, you know, in Asian countries like to kind of slather them on everywhere and they're great. And they're starting to come to the States. I know Garnier has one. Does Bobby have one? There are so there many are people coming out with BB creams. Have. But the trend that I'm Bocha noticing is has one. They're, they're making these BB creams as quote unquote um, a tinted moisturizer, mm -hmm. which is a little bit disconcerting to me mm -hmm. because there are people with dry skin out there that are using BB creams that really shouldn't. So we need to like educate them a little bit. That's mm -hmm. why I wanted to bring this up. Also, okay. the other thing is, um, and I know the people in retail are going to hate me for this, but um, Watch we got mouth. we got to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go there. It's like, sweetie, they need y'all need to save your money on tinted moisturizers. You well, take a little bit of your favorite gorgeous expensive moisturizer mm -hmm. with a little dollop of your perfectly matched foundation. Mm -hmm. Tinted moisturizer. Well, we are in the same camp, and I'll I'll end it on that because I too I believe in full coverage foundation because I feel like full you can make to whatever you want it to be. You exactly. can kind of water it down with your moisturizer. You can make it a tinted moisturizer. You can make it medium coverage. But when you need that full coverage, when you've got a raging zit or you, dark spot, I don't care how much tinted zit? moisturizer a, a you wear. A raging zit? A raging ah. zit. When you, <laughs> when you've got that, like, ain't no tinted moisturizer in the world going to cover that up. Exactly. So you need a full coverage. And I think so many consumers are afraid of full coverage, but you just kind of use it where you need it. You don't go and blend full it out. over the whole face. You there's just no reason to use need foundation. Need it there, need it there, and done. The thing that people don't understand is there's no reason to use foundation all over your face. Correct. Use it where you need it. Correct. Blend PJ, it out. This is we're done. Awesome. That was so fast. You are awesome. I love you, girl. Thank you so much for coming. Can I come Thank back? You so much.
Absolutely. Really? Let's, let's get that book now. Okay, good. Absolutely. So listen, tell folks, where can we see you next? How can we stalk you? We want to be oh, all God. up on your Twitter, your Facebook, everything. I'm so sort how of do like, we... I'm sort of like pigeon poo in Manhattan. I'm everywhere. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll be I've in never London. heard that one before, <laughs> but okay. I'll be in London and in New York for IMATS, the International Makeup Artist Trade Show. Okay. Uh, I'll be at the Makeup Show in New York this year. Okay. Um, you could find me at KJ Bennett, B E N N E T T dot. Come. Okay. You can find me on Facebook as Kevin James Bennett. You can find me on Twitter as KJ Bennett Beauty. You know, basically just Google. Kevin, mwah, my love, thank you so much for joining us. So my next guest is kind of a little bit off the beaten path for this, that beauty. I know a lot about fashion, a lot about beauty not too much about sports. And as we all know, the Super Bowl is coming up. So I thought it would be great to bring on a sports blogger who can help us girls kind of figure out the ins and outs of sports and how to make the, the Super Bowl enjoyable, how we can enjoy it with our guys. So welcome all sports everything uh, sports blogger, Shayna Stevenson. Thank you, Shayna, for coming. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Okay. The Super Bowl is coming up. We own season tickets. I don't know what's going on. Like, I can't, I don't understand the game, but I want to be able to follow and participate and not sound like an idiot. So can right. you give us just a few tips on, like, how to navigate the Super Bowl and really make it like a bonding experience with your guy versus, like, being the girl that fills up the chips and right, dip. Exactly. Like, I don't want to be that girl. Right. We definitely, don't want to be that girl, so right. help us. Definitely want to avoid just being there to, you know, fill up the bowl. Um, yeah, we don't want to be the chip girl. Right. So the New York Giants and the New England Patriots are playing this Sunday in uh -huh. Indianapolis. Um, so you're a Giants season ticket holder? Yes, and yes. do you attend any of the games? Have you? Um, by we, I mean Your my husband. husband and I. <laughs> and he says we own them, but I think he owns okay. them. Um, I've never been to a game, no. Okay. So... The down and dirty on the two teams okay. is that they met four years ago in the Super Bowl and the Giants won. Okay, I think and I remember that. I wore blue nail polish to support. Okay, that's one way that <laughs> women can spice it up and get in on the fun, uh -huh. um, accessorize with the home team or the team you're cheering for. Okay. Um, but, you know, another way to just kind of understand the game is that Eli Manning is the quarterback for the Giants. Okay. And Tom Brady, who's married to Giselle, uh -huh. top supermodel mm -hmm. in the world, is the quarterback for the Patriots. Okay. And at the beginning of the season, Tom Brady is considered to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And okay. Eli Manning, not so much. Okay. And even though My Eli, quarterback's not good? He's he's good. Okay. And he's proving a lot of people wrong okay. this season. He's had a great season. Um, and his older brother, Peyton, uh -huh. you know, has always kind of um, outshined him throughout his whole career. So okay. with Eli returning to the Super Bowl this year, Year, it's kind of like little brother is finally emerging out okay. of his younger, out of his older brother's shadow, okay. which is awesome. And at the beginning of the season, someone asked Eli, um, "Does he consider himself in the same class as a Tom Brady?" Okay, and he said yes, mm -hmm. and he was ripped for it just because throughout Eli's career he's been known to be inconsistent, mm -hmm. doesn't have that great of an arm, and okay. just wouldn't he wouldn't be within the top five. Um, quarterbacks in the league, mm -hmm. but throughout this season, um, and going back to 04 when, I'm sorry, in 08 when mm -hmm. they beat the Patriots, and then this season they went into New England and beat the Patriots on their home field, mm -hmm. which the Patriots only lost three games this whole season, uh -huh. so, um, and no one else beat them at home besides mm -hmm. the Giants, so that was a really big statement for the Giants for the Giants. Uh -huh. And so this is another opportunity for Eli to kind of show that he does belong in the upper echelon of okay. quarterbacks within the league. Okay. Um, and, you know, in terms of just following the game, on the Patriots, you know Tom Brady. There's mm -hmm. Chad Ochocinco, who okay. everyone knows. Right. He's a kind of flashy guy. It's hard to not know Ochocinco. Exactly. Even I know Ochocinco. Right. So he, you know, if you're into the big names, mm -hmm. um, kind of the spotlight guys, then that's the team for you to follow. Even okay. though Ochocinco has had a very quiet season. Uh -huh. He only caught one touchdown, uh -huh. which, you know, this was his first season with the Patriots mm -hmm. coming from Cincinnati where he was kind of a big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. And 
moving to New England, the role has completely been reversed and he's kind of disappeared off everyone's radar. Okay. Um, but, you know, he's still a personality which most women mm -hmm. know. So, you know, that would be one reason to kind of root for the, the Patriots. So, so Ocho Cinco and Tom Brady are the big personalities the, on, on the, the Patriots. Patriots. Okay, right. anyone else? No, not anyone else. Um, and so for the Giants, uh -huh. they don't have any big personalities okay. like that. So they're more of the underdog. So okay. if you're into rooting for the underdog, okay. then you could root for the Giants. Okay. Um, so it's kind of personality versus the underdog. Right. All right, girl. So this is like the first kind of step in deciding exactly. who we're going to root for. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, on the Giants... Uh, Matthias Key Wanuka, uh -huh. he's on the defense. He's from Indianapolis. Okay. So he's going back, playing in front of his friends and family. So okay. there's another story there that you can kind of get behind. Okay. So you've kind of broken down the history of like these two teams, and that kind of helps us to follow and understand. And then we've got the underdogs versus like the big personalities. Right. So now help us with like some terminology. Like what will we hear throughout the course of the game and help us to understand? understand what these terms mean so we're not like babe what does that mean and okay. why is that flag on the what you know right so that's definitely something you want to avoid during the game oh, because I do that. the super bowl that is not the time to do it the super oh. bowl is the holiest of sports days on the calendar. Oh, gosh. So for you to interrupt <laughs> your man, your guy, while he's enjoying the game is kind of sacrilegious. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Because I've definitely done that before. Okay. okay. All right. So um, a few things to just know about the, the two teams individually mm -hmm. is that the Giants are known to have a better defense. Okay. Okay. Um, and better pass rushers, okay. which means that they can attack Tom Brady. I'm glad you guys are like, what's a pass rusher? Right. Like, okay. Right. So they'll probably blitz Tom Brady a okay, lot, which what's means, a blitz? I'll tell you, which means <laughs> apply pressure to him to okay. make him get frazzled. Okay. Um, it doesn't allow him as much comfortability in terms of throwing the ball, seeing down the field. Uh -huh. um, one thing that you should know is that the Patriots do not have a really great secondary. Okay. And the secondary basically means that they don't have, on defense, Okay. They don't have um, a great team of players that can defend the Giants' core receivers. Okay. So when Eli Manning is throwing the ball and targeting his receivers, uh -huh. Victor Cruz, Mario Manningham, Hakeem Nix, those are mm -hmm. the three main receivers on okay. the Giants who have okay. had a exceptional seasons mm -hmm. um, and breakout seasons. The Patriots don't have a lot of guys that can defend that. Okay. And they also have a pretty decent running game okay. or rushing game. So let me ask you this because clearly this is your area of expert. Like you can rattle off <laughs> about the teams. Like I can tell you like what was in like the Chanel Nell collection of last season and everything else. So you clearly, clearly know your stuff. Let's talk predictions. Okay. Who's winning the Super Bowl? I'm... And we're running the camera, so. Okay, I'll go on record. Okay. I'm not afraid. This needs to be official. <laughs> I think the Giants Woo, will home take team. it. Um, I'm a Jets fan, okay. so this game is pretty heartbreaking for me because the Patriots are the Jets' number one rival, and then okay. obviously you know <laughs> the um, battle back and forth between the Giants and mm -hmm. the Jets for home turf, who owns New York type of thing. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go with the home team, okay. not just because of New York, but also because I think that the Jet, the Giants have clicked at a really good time. Okay. Um, they struggled. I mean, they weren't. Most people didn't even predict that they'd be in the Super Bowl at uh -huh. this point because earlier in the season they went to through a four-game losing streak mm -hmm. and everyone wrote them off. And then they just started to string together win after win, mm -hmm. and they really surprised a lot of people and okay. put together this amazing Cinderella run to the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, but because the Giants have a you know a great core receiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, guys that can receive the ball. They have a strong rushing game, mm -hmm. and defensively, too, they're stronger compared to the Patriots, mm -hmm. who their, their claim to fame this season has been 
Aaron Hernandez and uh, Rob Gronkowski, mm -hmm. who are tight ends, like the best two tight ends in the game, mm -hmm. and Wes Welker, who's also a receiver. Okay. But um, Gronkowski is suffering with an ankle injury, so okay. look for the Giants to attack that. Okay. Like, they are not going to. They know where to zone exactly. in and, and get all the holes in their defense. Yes. All right. <laughs> So I I'm think learning. I think for those reasons the Giants will the Giants okay. will win. Okay. Well, you heard it here for, first. Shana Stevenson of All Sports Everything uh, predicts that the Giants will win. Now the next thing I want to talk about because I'm really into pop culture and the only reason I kind of know about football or know anything is because of like the 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 celebrities I guess like the kind of celebrity aspect of football. So I know who Tom Brady is because of Giselle. I know who Ocho Cinco is because of. You you know, VH1 mm -hmm. and, you know, the reality show and, you know, like Reggie Bush because right. of Kim Kardashian. So let's talk a little bit about the evolution of athletes. And like, I mean, before it used to just be about like their athleticism on the field. But you see now athletes are evolving into like right. other areas of entertainment and you know, kind of talk to that a little bit and tell me where you kind of see this going. Right. I, I mean, that's a really good point. You have someone on the Giants like a Devin Thomas mm -hmm. who's done a lot of modeling mm -hmm. and is also trying to transition into acting. And I think that, you know, it's just a natural transition for mm -hmm. most athletes, especially modeling because they're fit mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. um, Are they? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, their bar their body mm -hmm. is it's like art. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why not showcase that? Mm -hmm. Um or you have a Calvin Johnson who's on the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. who uh, was modeling in an Audi commercial earlier mm -hmm. this season because, you know, they look good, mm -hmm. they, you know, fit clothes really well, mm -hmm. and I think that they already come with this built-in fan base, mm -hmm. both men and women, mm -hmm. so it's just a natural, it's just a natural fit for so most you see, brands to align themselves with these people that already have this built-in fan base. Uh-huh, so you see this brand trend recognition. evolving. Oh, absolutely. I okay. think it's something that, you know, more and more athletes will will try to get into you also see another trend you see with mm -hmm. athletes is them moving behind the camera wanting to be you know become more involved with entertainment mm -hmm. before it was like every athlete wanted to be a rapper right uh -huh. and <laughs> don't remind us of Shaquille right? yeah. <laughs> thankfully we've moved beyond that uh -huh. um, and right now the new trend is them trying to become a producer or mm -hmm. become a director for example um, for example like Baron Davis on the Knicks okay. has his own production company okay um, and he's actually going to be appearing on um, Betty White's show ah hot in Cleveland hot in Cleveland uh -huh. exactly he's he's making a guest appearance on that show very cool um, and Amari Stoudemire recently made a guest appearance on a TV show mm -hmm. so you see these you know these um, athletes become more like renaissance men yeah. before and I think social media helps a lot mm -hmm, with that mm -hmm. because they get to showcase that you know we do have other talents yeah. and coaches besides just catching the ball yeah. and running. Yeah and they get to engage and I like that this is evolving outside of the traditional you know like you said rapper or, you know just very traditional like it within the music industry and entertainment but it's going into other areas exactly. as well. Well there you have it. Thank you, Shayna Stevenson of All Sports Everything for a fantastic show. And thank you all for watching so much. The first ever This That Beauty show. There's more to come. I want to just take a moment to extend my gratitude and thank my fabulous guests, again, Shayna Stevenson of All Sports Everything and Kevin James Bennett, phenomenal Emmy Award winning celebrity makeup artist. I want to thank the crew for the lighting and making me look good and pretty. And this has just been fantastic. Stay tuned for more. We've got a really phenomenal show coming up in February. We're going to have a Valentine's Day focus. So we'll have lots of beauty and fashion and tips on getting the love that you're looking for in 2012, as well as Fashion Week, of course. February is Fashion Week, and I'll be behind the tents, backstage, getting the looks and bringing it all back for you. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Welcome to Felicia's Picks. Now, while I love the entire This That Beauty show, 
Felicia's picks is my most favorite part of the show because here's where I get to share with you my faves and raves, things that I'm really into at the moment. So I know with trend, there are things that come and go, but the first thing we're gonna start with, and we're gonna run the gamut of skincare, makeup, body, we're gonna cover a little bit of everything. Right now it's winter, skin is dry, and you know I wanna talk to you a little bit about products that are gonna work for that and also great products for your complexion. So starting off, I mean it's 2012, whether it's 2012, 2011, Skin is always in. Complexion perfection is what we're always striving for. So for that, I really love Makeup Forever High Definition um, Starter Kit. Now, what's great about this High Definition Complexion Starter Kit is that you work with the beauty expert at Sephora and you kind of customize your kit. So you customize your foundation shade, there's a primer, and then a finishing powder. And this is gonna give you just a very beautiful, luminous looking complexion. What I love about this brand is that they have a wide range of shades. So if you're at the extremely fair end of the complexion spectrum or at the really deep end, they're going to have a shape for your complexion. And with the complexion kit, you have everything you need to prep, to prime your skin, to get the even beautiful coverage that you need, and then lastly to finish it and give it that beautiful radiant kind of candlelit look that we love. Next, let's move on to uh, the Beauty Blender. So this is called the Beauty Blender and it's actually kind of like the second version of the Beauty Blender. The first Beauty Blender was like a little, you know, pink shaped egg. This one is new and what it is, is it's white and it comes with a little, I'll pick it up here, it comes with a little carrying case because whenever I used to use the Beauty Blender I wonder, okay, like how am I going to travel with this? How am I going to like, you know, get to and from with it. What's great about this is like you use the Beauty Blender, you can keep it in your little, you know, carry case here. And now the cleaner for the Beauty Blender, it comes as a solid. So this is incredible because you can carry it with you, you can clean your Beauty Blender. Now the way that you use this is you take your foundation, you get like a little bit of a dot, on your hand or in the palm of your hand and you use the blender and you apply it to your face and it gives that really dreamy airbrush finish. So this and the complexion kit would actually work really well together. Next, let's switch to um, skincare. So we're gonna start with Mario Badescu Hydrating Serum. I absolutely cannot make it through the winter without this serum. It's incredibly nourishing and hydrating without being heavy. So after I wash my face, apply my toner, the next thing I do is apply the herbal hydrating serum all over my face. Let that set in a little bit and then I move on to my moisturizer with SPF. Again, can't make it through the winter without this product. It's just very gentle and light and it hydrates your skin. Um, seeing as we're talking about skin, let's move on to the Voltre Vu Bebe Duet. Now, what I love about this, it's a really, you know, smart package because your hands get dry, your lips get dry. What's cool about this is you've got your hand cream on one end and you snap this other end and you've got a little lip balm there. It's got a little color, but it's very like fleshy, new, you know, kind of look. Just a little hint of color, not anything too vibrant. Not like the lipstick I'm wearing now. It's much more subtle and beautiful. Um, now this, the next product I want to talk about is one of the most genius mascaras on the market, I think. It's the Guerlain Le Tue Mascara. Now, I'm going to show you what's so incredible about this mascara. When I apply, I love to be able to, you know, do my upper lashes and get a really good coat. But I also, to kind of give that, you know, pop, you know, lash look, kind of Kim Kardashian. I like to do my bottom lashes too. And what's great about this brush is that it has a tiny little brush on one end that you can coat your bottom, mess, your bottom lashes with too. So that's really cool. Um, the next thing I want to go to, and again, keeping with the dry skin theme, is the Choco Mania collection from the Body Shop. Now, I was not always a fan, I'll tell you, of like body butters and body creams because they seem really, really heavy on your skin. But the body butter that comes with this collection, and it's like a soap, a shower gel, you get a nice loofah, and the body butter and a scrub, it's really like it melts right into your skin. So as soon as you apply it, it doesn't like kind of sit on the skin. It's not sticky. It's not icky. It just kind of melts right in. And I love that. And I actually think, I wonder if they reformulate it because I feel like it absorbs just much more easily than it used to. So this collection I absolutely love. And you can see the little heart. And it's perfectly packaged for Valentine's Day too. Uh, next, let's get into hair care. So, you know, as many of you know, I've got very dry hair. I talk about it a lot on my blog. Um, it gets tangled very easily, and I was this close to a weed whacker until discovering Joyco K-Pack. Now, what I love about these products is the shampoo and conditioner. What I love about these is that 
they're very effective very quickly. So with some conditioners, you've got to kind of sit and deep condition and wait, wait, wait for the results to take effect. With this, within three to five minutes, you know, you shampoo, you add your conditioner, you comb it through, and it's like tangles be gone. I absolutely love this. I can't live without it. My hair is so tangly, and this just kind of helps to make it beautiful. Um, the last place I want to go is kind of talk about a scent story. If you love really beautiful floral, romantic scents, very delicate and light, I really suggest you try Narciso Rodriguez for her. This, I mean, number one, the bottle is just phenomenal. Can we talk about that? But obviously, you know, you want to smell nice too. Pack packaging is beautiful, but you want a nice scent. It's very delicate floral. You've got a little bit of thick, so it's not like too florally. It's not too sweet. It's just really delicate and beautiful. And it's a limited edition. And I don't know if you're, you know, a perfume connoisseur like I am. I love to collect and I really love special limited scents. So that's what really drew me to this. And these are my picks. Every single episode of the This That Beauty Show, I'll have my favorites. These will be things that I'm really, really enjoying at the moment. Things that if you bump into me on the street, you're gonna find, you know, the hand cream in my bag, or I'm gonna be wearing a lip balm. So these are just my passions of the moment, and I really enjoy sharing them with you. Feel free to write in if you have any questions and thank you so much for watching. Bye.